Hello, I'm Sally Pointer and welcome to sunny Herefordshire. It's not that sunny this morning but it's a lot nicer than it has been recently. Well I'm out this morning on my usual hedge bothering walk and today I am picking horseradish. Very very common hedgerow plant. Most people know it for its fiery root which makes a lovely condiment. I'm going to be using it for something a little bit more exciting than that. Back in a second when I've picked a bit more. So it's a busy road here, so we might get background noise. But the horseradish, where it grows, it grows very, very happily indeed. There's no shortage of the stuff. Lovely big leaves, but it's those centre ribs that we're after. So we're back in the garden now where it's a little bit quieter. I've got my horseradish and the part that we're after is this bit the stalk and the long stem up the back. Our first job is just to take a knife and strip away the green leaves. Some people do eat these when they're cooked they're a little bit like a kale so quite robust but the horseradish taste does cook out. So that's our raw material for this cordage project. project. Nice long stalks of horseradish all we've done is just peeled the leaves off the outer ribs. So the trick here is just to slice the horseradish down its length. I'm using a butter knife just to cut through it. You can use a pocket knife, you can even just use your fingernails if you need to. What we need to do is remove all of the screen part from the white fibres that run up the centre of the stalk. And the easiest way to do that is with something like a butter knife or you can use a piece of flint. Whatever's bluntly sharp, if that makes any sense. Now you can do it over a surface, but I find it easier just to put my thumb over the top of the knife. It's not going to cut you. It's not going to cut you. And just pull the plant material over the knife blade. You can see those white fibres starting to come through quite strongly here already. Just scrape away the green matter. It's exactly the same process you'd use on something like nettles. It's just the horseradish fibre is a bit thicker, a bit more robust, and it's going to present itself rather more quickly. Don't worry if you lose a few fibres along the way, there's so many in the horseradish that it's really not a big, big deal. There we are, lovely long straight fibres. They're a very pale greenish colour at the moment, but they're going to go very white when they dry out. And with all cordage material, it's always better to let them dry for a little bit before you start working with them. So I've processed a little bit of this horseradish. This bundle here has just been done. It's got a greenish colour. This bundle was done last week. Now, normally I find horseradish dries out completely white. This I left in a sunny conservatory and I wonder if it dried a little too fast. Anyway, it's a golden colour, not unattractive. It did dry very, very stiff and brittle. Now you want the initial moisture to leave your cordage fibres, but you also need a bit of flexibility in there for actually making the cordage. So I ran this under the tap very briefly and it's had probably about a minute just to soften up. The cordage making method is exactly the same as you would with pretty much any fibres. Take off a few fibres, I'm just going to move these out of the way so you can see my hands. Now the method that I find works best for most people is to fold your bundle of fibres very roughly in half. Hold the bundle, in this case in your left hand, it doesn't really matter whether you do this left or right handed, most people can find they can do this ambidextrously but I will show you the left handed method in a moment. 
This gives you a top strand and a bottom strand. The top strand you're going to twist away from you just as much as your fingers or your wrist naturally rotates and then you're going to grab the bottom strand and swap places. Now this hand, your left hand, is just going to pinch where it crosses. Now this is your top strand. Twist away, cross down. Move that little pinch just to secure things. Twist away, cross down, twist away, cross down. How exactly you hold your hands doesn't matter. Everybody's hands work very slightly differently depending on what you do with them in everyday life. So some people find they can use all of their extra fingers as extra clamps. You can take this hand away at any point. It's only going to unwind a tiny bit as it settles. Mostly it's there just to secure things. Twist and cross, twist and cross. If you were doing this left-handed, the easiest way to do it is to twist towards you, cross behind, twist towards you, cross behind. It's exactly the same motion, we've just reversed it. The right hand, twist away, cross over the front, twist away, cross over the front. The left hand, twist towards you, cross behind, twist towards you, cross behind. Whichever way works best for you is fine. Now there's a couple of different ways to lie in new fibres. There's a lot of sites out there that will suggest that when you need a new fibre, you lay them in along the side, twist, cross, twist, cross. Now that does work, but that's going to give you sticky out bits and it can also lead to a weak spot. You can do it successfully, but I find for most people the easiest way is actually to lie your new fibre completely across the bundle so that some of it's on one strand, some of it's on the other. Just pay particular attention to your next couple of crosses because they're going to lock it into place. But that's going to give you a very seamless join and it's going to be very strong from the word go. Now by adding in fibres little and often, you can make a fairly endless length of string, whichever thickness you want, and you'll be missing as many of the weak spots as can possibly be avoided. So there we are, a little bit of horse rider string can be used for all sorts of different things. Quite a fun thing to do with what's otherwise an extremely common weed here in the British countryside. Hope you've enjoyed this video, it's one of our very first, they will get better and a bit slicker looking as we go along, but for now I'm practicing and I hope you don't mind following along.